OK, so we're going to solve this inequality. And the first step we'll take towards solving it is just trying to simplify a little bit. So a nice first step we could take is, for example, this ln x cubed term. We can take the power of 3 outside of the logarithm. because This is equivalent to 3 times ln x. So we get a slightly nicer expression in the denominator there. And the next thing we'll look at is this ln 1 plus 4 over x term. See if we can somehow combine this with our ln x plus 4 term into a single logarithm term. So we start on our left hand side, we've got this fraction now, ln x plus 2 all squared, divided by this 3 plus ln x cubed, but we'll write this as 3 plus 3 ln x using the simplification there. Then if we subtract this ln 1 plus 4 over x term on both sides, we'll get ln x plus 4 minus ln 1 plus 4 over x on the right hand side. And the reason we've subtracted this is now we can use the law of logarithms for ln of a minus ln of b in a more general form. This is always equivalent to ln of a over b. So we can combine these two terms into a single logarithm. So our right hand side then is just equivalent to ln of x plus 4 over 1 plus 4 over x like this. So now let's have a look at this fraction in a bit more detail. We've got x plus 4 over 1 plus 4 over x. So first of all, let's just multiply by x in our numerator and denominator so we don't have a fraction in the denominator. So we get x squared plus 4x. Then multiplying the denominator by x, we have just x plus 4. And you can see this numerator will actually factorise, giving us x into x plus 4 all over x plus 4. So there's some nice cancellation here. And in fact, this is all just equivalent to x here. And you'll see this is going to be valid so long as x isn't equal to negative 4. So we'll come to, in a moment, dealing with which values of x this inequality is valid for. But for now, we've just shown that x plus 4 over 1 plus 4 over x is equivalent to x. So then we can just write this as ln of x, provided x isn't equal to negative 4. So our right hand side then is just ln of x, so we can actually conclude then that our left hand side is less than ln of x, where our left hand side is this ln x plus 2 all squared divided by 3 plus 3 ln x. So now we've got an improved version of our inequality that's slightly neater to work with. But let's just think now about which values of x is our inequality valid for. So we just look at each of the terms in sequence. First of all, ln x, in order to be well defined for a real value of x, we need x to be positive. So we require that x is strictly greater than zero in order for ln x to be well defined. Then looking at the denominator here, ln of x cubed, so long as x is positive, that's going to be well defined. But we run into problems if the denominator is zero, because you'd have three plus ln x cubed. If that's equal to zero, this fraction is no longer well defined. So seeing the denominator in this form, 3 plus 3 ln x, you see we have zero in the denominator exactly when ln x is equal to negative 1. So we need to say then that ln x can't be equal to negative 1. So what does this tell us about the value of x? Well, this tells us if ln of x was equal to negative 1, then x, that would have to be e to the power of negative 1. So this is telling us that x can't be equal to e to the power of negative 1, because then you'd have ln of e to the negative 1 would give you negative 1, which wouldn't be allowed, because then in our fraction in the denominator we would have 0 there. So we've got that x is positive, and it also can't be equal to this reciprocal of e. Then if we look at our next term, ln of 1 plus 4 over x, so 1 plus 4 over x is always going to be positive when x is positive. So we don't get any new restrictions there. And this 4 over x is fine because x can't be 0, because we've already imposed that x has to be greater than 0. So then the final term to look at is this ln x plus 4, which is also fine because x is positive, so x plus 4 is certainly also going to be positive. And you can see in our working here where we needed that x wasn't equal to negative 4, that's also satisfied now because we've got that x is greater than 0. So we've now got our inequality in a slightly nicer form with the added restriction that x has to be greater than 0 and also x can't be equal to 
the reciprocal of e, so it can't be equal to 1 over e. And now to make things a little bit more manageable when we do some more manipulations, we'll just replace all of these ln x terms by a new variable, which we'll call u. So if we define u as just ln x, let's think about what values u is allowed to take. So if x has to be positive, then ln of x, well this could actually just give us any real number. So the fact that x has to be positive just means that ln x is well defined. So that doesn't impose any restrictions on u other than that u is a real number. And then the fact that x isn't equal to 1 over e, the whole point of this was so that ln x isn't equal to negative 1. So x not being equal to 1 over e means ln x can't be equal to negative 1. So u can't be equal to negative 1. So then if we substitute in, replace all of our ln x's by u, we'll get a slightly nicer looking inequality. u plus 2 all squared, all divided by 3 plus 3u is now less than u. And at this point now we're tempted to multiply on both sides by this 3 plus 3u. But this step actually requires a bit of thought because it's possible that this 3 plus 3u could be negative, in which case we might need to swap the inequality sign. So just to illustrate this with an example, let's say we have 5 over negative 2, which we know is less than negative 1. If we were to multiply by negative 2 on both sides and not change the inequality, you would get 5 is less than 2, which is of course false here, where we've multiplied by negative 2. But if you multiply by negative 2, multiply by a negative on both sides, you just need to change the inequality sign. So we get 5 is greater than 2, which works. And if you multiply by something positive on both sides, whether you've got something negative or positive on either side, the inequality would still be preserved. So for example, 5 over negative 2 is less than negative 1. And if we just multiply by positive 2 on both sides, we get negative 5 is less than negative 2 just to illustrate that that works when we multiply by a positive, we don't need to change the sign. So this 3 plus 3u, first of all, 3 plus 3u is greater than 0. If we rearrange here, take away 3, divide by 3, this is when u is greater than negative 1. And our second case where 3 plus 3u is negative, so 3 plus 3u is less than 0, so this happens, take away 3 and divide by 3 again, it's when u is less than negative 1. And notice here that because u is not allowed to be equal to negative 1, we've covered all the possible cases here. So we get two slightly different inequalities in each case. So first of all, where 3 plus 3u is positive, we don't need to change the inequality symbols. We have u plus 2 all squared now is less than u times 3 plus 3u. Whereas in this case where u is less than negative 1, so 3 plus 3u is negative, we need to swap the symbol around. So we get u plus 2 all squared is actually greater than u times 3 plus 3u. So now in each of these cases we're much closer to being able to solve this to find the values of u and hence the values of x for which our original inequality holds. So if we first look at the case where u is greater than negative 1, we can expand the brackets in this inequality and rearrange. So first of all, just expanding the brackets, we've got u squared plus 4u plus 4 on the left-hand side has got to be less than 3u plus 3 times u squared. Then if we take all of these terms over onto the right-hand side, you see that we're left with a quadratic, which has now got to be greater than 0. So we've got 3u squared minus 1 lot of u squared, so 2u squared, 3u minus 4u, so minus u, and then just minus 4. So we could think of this as the values of u for which this quadratic is greater than 0. So at this point we could find the roots to this quadratic using the quadratic formula. So putting this into the quadratic formula, we have our negative b is 1 plus or minus b squared, so just 1, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times 2 times another negative 4, at which point we divide by 2a, so we divide by 4. So then you see that this turns into 1 plus or minus the square root of 33, all divided by 4. So this is really useful now because we know these are the roots of our quadratic in u, so we're interested in graphically now, we just want to know we've got 1 plus 
root 33 over 4, and we get a negative root 1 minus root 33 over 4 somewhere over here. And we're interested in where is this quadratic greater than 0. So you can see that it's going to be greater than 0 either side of our roots, but don't forget that we're restricted just to this case where u is greater than negative 1. And you can actually check that negative 1 takes place to the right of our smaller root. So 1 minus root 33 over 4. For example, we know root 33 is greater than 5, so 1 minus root 33 is going to be less than negative 4. So when we divide by 4, we get something less than negative 1. So actually, the only solutions are going to be where u is greater than this 1 plus root 33 all over 4 within this range where u is greater than minus 1. So then we can say in this case our only solutions are where u is greater than 1 plus root 33 all over 4. And now in the case where u is less than negative 1 we can expand the brackets just like before we get almost the same inequality. We've got u squared plus 4u plus 4 but now this is greater than 3u plus 3u squared. So if we take everything onto the right hand side, we now have a quadratic, the same as before, 2u squared minus u minus 4. But now we're interested in the values of u for which this quadratic is less than 0. And remember, this is only valid when u is less than negative 1. So we already know what this quadratic looks like just on a graph. We have our two roots, one at 1 plus root 33 over 4, and we've got a negative 1 over here, 1 minus root 33 over 4. And then we also know that negative 1 is somewhere to the right of this root here. And we're interested in the values of u for which this quadratic is now negative. So we're interested in, it's going to be all the values of u here between our negative root and negative 1. So then we can say in this case where u is less than negative 1, that our values of u for which the inequality holds are going to be where we're between 1 minus root 33 all over 4 and we're bounded from above by negative 1. So we've now solved the inequality for the variable u, but don't forget our original variable x is what we're actually trying to solve for. So if we start off with where u is greater than 1 over root 33 over 4 in the first case, we know that u is equal to ln x. So this first case gives us ln x is greater than 1 plus root 33 all over 4. But then we could do e to the power of each side of this inequality to see that x then has got to be greater than e to the power of 1 plus root 33 over 4. So these are some of our values of x for which the inequality is satisfied for this first case where u was greater than negative 1. And then in our second case where we had u between negative 1 and 1 minus root 33 over 4, we can replace our u here. We know that u is just equal to ln x. Then if we raise e to the power of each of these terms, they would still stay in the same order. The inequality would be preserved by raising e to those powers. So then we would see that our second set of solutions are where we have e to the 1 minus root 33 all over 4 is less than x, and also less than e to the negative 1, so less than 1 over e. So we get these two different sets of solutions, values of x, for which our original inequality is satisfied.